I'm on my daily morning walk through the woods, very close by to the tiny house, just down the hill. I'm very fortunate to have this, uh, this woodland and paths nearby. I've just seen a cyclist, uh, a mountain biker, just zoom by, but that's quite unusual. There are usually only dog walkers you can see behind me a uh, a pile of sticks <laughs> to some to some to some eyes to others a night shelter uh, you would be glad of this shelter on a stormy night i guess oh and look look who we've got here we've got, we've got a couple of Horse riders riding through the woods as well. It's a busy Sunday morning. Here's another pile of sticks, this time in the roots of a fallen tree. But again, you'd be glad of that in a storm. A little bit of jump training going on with the horses. You won't get me doing that. You might get me uh, sheltering in one of these. There are three actually, we've, pass we've just passed another one, but uh, there are three uh, twiglet shelters. Um, I have spent uh, a night in the woods, not here, Nearby at uh, Stanton in the Peak, there's an ancient Bronze Age um, henge, uh, a stone circle called Nine Ladies. Uh, coming up to uh, the longest day of the year, the sum is at the summer solstice, uh, there will be uh, a gathering of... Uh, it's private and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there are big signs. Don't don't snitch on me now, because there are signs saying uh, private, no camping, no no overnight, no barbecues, no no telling jokes, uh, no no fun at all. But I understand why. But between you and me, I do go there. Not not these woods, but those woods. There's a quarry and a very quiet space, and I just take uh, my one-man tent and sleeping bag. And uh, several times I've just spent a night in the woods by the stone circle. Lovely energy. I've done uh, I've done several sort of made-up homemade rituals at the Nine Ladies over the years. It seems to be uh, some embedded part of us, which most of us have lost living in cities. I think, is it 70% of the world's population now lives in cities? It's probably more than that. It's taken me some weeks. Well, I've I lived in Bakewell six years, and now I've lived in, uh, well, secret location in the Dales for six months and I've been walking daily in the woods here for I guess I guess it must be six weeks now I wouldn't miss it um, I'd be sad to miss my morning walk here well you get you get the feel of it why why wouldn't you I'm 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 very pleased with myself this morning because I've been training my ear to listen to different uh, bird songs. Blackbird, easy, ubiquitous. That's a blackbird in the back background now. But this morning, for the first time, without referring to my app on my phone, my Merlin Bird ID app, I recognised for the first time a Chiff Chaff's Chiff Chaff. Progress, little by little. I'm reading Charles Foster's book, How, to, not how to be a human. <laughs> it's called Being a Human. And 
he um, to to get inside the mind or rather the consciousness of what it is to be human he um, he he lives or camps or scavenges or survives in the wood not far from here it turns out more in the direction of Sheffield but in the Derbyshire Dales where I am now and he writes very uh, articulately and amusingly and provocatively about how early Paleolithic man um, they had to have um, a, an intimate relationship with nature um, with the trees uh, and the animals because quite simply their lives depended on it no deliveroo in the woods you have to uh, fend for yourself and there was a, a, a deep awareness of the interdependence of life so a separate little me consciousness uh, really wasn't going to cut it uh, for the for Paleolithic man to survive and they were very successful um, for tens of thousands of years we we forget this M modern man let's say post enlightenment 17th century man has only been around for a few hundred years a few generations but Paleolithic man we're talking 40,000 years ago they'd learned their tricks of survival in the woods for let let's say conservatively a hundred thousand years 300 generations they knew a lot more about the rhythm of life and uh, gosh I'm just looking at the light on these ferns it's one of my favorite times of year this big look at that this almost glows with the light and so do we sometimes don't we so um, they had a very close relationship with nature and with animals and in this book he talks about how of course they needed to eat um, not just berries but animals capture in that they're retracing the steps of the uh, the movement of the herds of caribou in those days 40,000 years ago in this neck of the woods and there was a deep reverence for life not like our um, ag agro business farming with um, cooped up chickens and pigs and um, and f uh, f corralled cattle to feed human burger appetites and the rest but um, you would you would do a ritual before you killed any animal if you weren't in harmony with the land you would uh, fear that you would be spat out so to speak um, ostracized sent to Coventry excommunicated from the natural environment if you took a life without giving appropriate thanks and I suppose apology so the the connection with nature was literally a matter of life and death which of course we've all but lost that I can't re uh, inject that into my own consciousness in a few weeks but it's sinking in and uh, I said <laughs> you're going to think I'm deaf now um, I have my favorite tree. I, I say good morning good morning to uh, the woods and I listen I have a favorite uh, companion here um, I've got three, I have to say, at the moment, favourite trees. I ask them for advice on things and they give it. Birds are still at it. 
turning into a, a St. Francis, a St. Phil, a, a St. Phil of the, of the Derbyshire Dales. A bit late in life, but better late than never. Yes, I speak to the trees because that's my sort of, sort of uh, knee-jerk reaction to develop a relationship with the woods here. I use language, but actually they use silence. And it takes time to listen to uh, the meaning of silence. Hello, silence, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again has a sort of new resident re resonance. Anyway, musing, Sunday morning musings from the wood. My friends, the trees and the birds, must be time for breakfast.